You're a huge That 70s Show fan. Sure. So, why wouldn't you? I'm Quark, owner of Quark's Bar, Embassy, Gaming House, and Hollow Suite Arcade. And you're listening to The Neutral Zone with my bastard son, DJ Grom, right here on Subspace Radio, the voice of Star Trek Online. Hello and welcome to the final report uh, for Gen 1957 Science Fiction. I am the student, DJ Grum, and this is the realm of virtual reality which I have created for myself. Please stick around. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour. First, I'll tell you about me. I'm DJ Grub. Uh, I'm Subspace Radio's only Ferengi DJ. And for the past five years, I've been hanging out in this place. Uh, and I've attracted quite a lot of friends and followers, as you can see. So, uh, I'll give you a bit of the ground rules. Uh, first thing you'll notice um, is that it looks a lot like the hole that the people with the chest tingies in uh, Walter J. M. Miller's uh, Crucifixus Etiam always wore, you know? They had the big whole sucky tanks in their throat, uh, and, uh, you know, they had to breed through them, right? Well, they also had to live in uh, oh, a space station, right? Uh, Ground-based, this one's space-based, but uh, as you can see, uh, uh, this place, well, it's a little more spacious, and uh, there's certainly a lot more girls, so... <laughs> Come to think about it, it's nothing like what those poor biters had to live with. All right, uh, let me give you a quick rundown. This is my bar. I control it, as you can see, much like the Lord of the Flies. I am the big male alpha, alpha male in charge, as you can see, and you can tell because the females have come to me in subservience and are swarming me. Oh, look at the And the people down there, by the way, they are the lonely listeners. <laughs> they worship me. <laughs> you see, we spend most of our time, if you look in the lower um, left-hand corner, you'll see a little chatty box. Uh, you can see some good stuff in there. That's how we communicate. Uh, sometimes, you know, we'll sit back and discuss 13th century literature. I have to tell you, if you would have been here last week, you would have saw my buddy Raktor. He, he thought that Roger Bacon shouldn't have been imprisoned for practicing alchemy. No, no, he figures he should have been imprisoned for not brewing beer like a proper Franciscan friar. Ha ha ha! Raktor has these things he calls alcohol uh, criminal alcohol elements or something like that. Um, going back to what I was saying, uh, this is my buddy Raktor. Um, he role plays a Klingon, as you can see. Um, in uh, the real world, uh, he's a big tough guy. I know his name and I talk to him uh, every now and then, but uh, in here I know him as Raktor. The thing that made Raktor <laughs> uh, mostly um, unusual is that uh, he's actually showed up for almost every one of my broadcasts without asking, without getting paid. Not that I get paid to do this either, but uh, um, things I'd like to point out about Raktor, he's um, very similar to the character Guy Burkhardt in Frederick Poe's The Tunnel Under the World. And please let me explain. First of all, 
They both wake up screaming every morning. That's a given. A uh, rock door drinks a lot, so um, they both they both prone to violent outbursts, uh, usually directed at authority figures. Uh, they both pass out unexpectedly when the sun goes down, and uh, strangely enough, they both have no clue what they did the day before, and they like to spend every single day exactly the same. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Raktor's getting upset. Oh, and the other thing is, Raktor has a lovely wife, just like E. Burkhart. Her name happens to be Lady Ga Ga. And as you can see, she's slightly older than um, Guy Burkhardt's wife, but, uh, you know, she's got the spunk, and she keeps everyone happy, so, uh, him especially, so, I wouldn't say that counts. Alright, moving on to my buddy, Jesse. Jesse is the unex... Uh, un... What was the word there? Un... un I can't remember. You know what? I'm losing it. I'm focusing. Jesse is the undisputed king of Sniffer's Row. And that is this place down here. In real life, Jesse is a 15-year-old little boy. And like a little boy, he has been raised by me, DJ Grom. I have been going out of my way to teach him oh, all the finer points of life. And because of that, I have to say, Jesse most resembles um, Professor Thomas Kelvin in Jack Williamson's The Metal Man. And the reason I say that is they both fly aerial vehicles, which don't work too well too well and um most importantly um since he is a little boy he's going through a transformation of his own one day oh one day he'll be old he'll be old like us and uh, he'll slow down and stop moving you know much like the metal man <laughs> thank you jesse i appreciate that you took time out of your busy schedule to be here for this um down below is dj jen he's a fellow dj on the same station as me um that makes him cool uh, he actually does a broadcast before me um but i'm gonna talk about nala nala is this lovely green orion slave girl you see dancing beside me um nala well nala is most like the naked female who had the big long red cloak in Larry Niven's The Cloak of Anarchy. And the reason I say that is because even though she's fully aware of all the dangers that lurk around this place, she is protected because this place is a no violence zone. You see? <laughs> oh, and most importantly, like Larry, Larry Niven pointed out, she is, and I quote from this story, a lovely from the back with dimples. Now, you'll have to take my word for it, um, but trust me, uh, that is the case. So, <laughs> isn't that wonderful? Oh, and most, there she is. Oh, she made it. Oh, missing mouse. I didn't think you'd be here. I thought you were blowing me off and not going to help me with my project. All right. And last but not least, um, <laughs> this is Missing Vows. She is most like the creepy tentacle aliens in A.E. Van Vaught's The Monster. And the reason I say that is, well, she has tentacles coming out of her forehead. She's green, you know, they were green. And uh, she does not trust humans whatsoever so i don't i think that sums it up you know um so i guess this is a crude form of uh, what we like to call transhumanism uh, which is human beings taking on the parts of <laughs> machines you know and living in a virtual matrix such as this one so um so that's about it uh, i hope that this has been um 
I hope that this has provided insight, extended your learning, and shown you how learning affects worldview. And since I have a couple minutes left, I have to score some brownie points. Uh, um, you're looking rather lovely today. Uh, uh, I hope uh, today finds you well. Uh, <laughs> I've been so good. Please, 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 please give me an A. I'll do anything. <laughs> oh, just let me have an A. <laughs> What do you take? Oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> Say. <laughs>